Hello everybody, my name is Ryan Guest. Welcome back to another video from Election Predictions Official. In today's video, we are going to take a look at some of the most realistic combinations for Donald Trump or whoever the Republican nominee may be in 2024 to reach 270 electoral votes and be elected president. Now on your screen right now, you can see the 2020 presidential election results depicting state margins through opacity. The darkest shades of blue or red represent victories by more than 12 percentage points for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. States with margins between 7 to 12 points have the next lighter shade, followed by those with margins between 2 to 7 points and then 0 to 2 points here in the lightest shade. Looking at the electoral count, 306 to 232 in favor of Democrats, it might not seem like this election was very close. But if a few votes in a few states had swung differently, Donald Trump would have won a second term. In the narrowest sense, Trump lost the election by a margin of 42,918 votes. This figure is attained by calculating the total raw vote difference in the three closest states by raw vote margin, Georgia, Arizona, and Wisconsin. If Trump had managed to flip these states, the Electoral College result would have been deadlocked at 269 to 269, and Trump likely would have won the election as in the event of an Electoral College tie, the House of Representatives would have picked the president, and the GOP would have controlled that process. Of course, saying that, it is impossible to target voters so precisely. Even if Trump's campaign had known exactly how many voters he needed to win and where they lived, there's no guarantee that they could have pulled it off. If Trump had put more effort into winning these 42,918 votes, he might have lost support elsewhere. That being said, candidates do possess some capacity to sway voters by strategically allocating their time, funds, and messaging. Understanding the required number of voters to sway a particular state would provide any candidate with a substantial advantage. And while pinpointing that number for the 2024 election with extreme precision is not possible, the 2020 presidential election does give us a solid foundation from which to work. So with that, let's translate these 2020 results over to a 2024 electoral college map with the updated electoral vote distribution following the 2020 census. And as you can see here, the count as a result of the census shifts three votes in favor of Republicans, now at 303 to 235. And while 2024 in all likelihood will not be an exact replay of 2020, that year's electoral map is still the best template we have. By looking at the routes that Trump had to victory last time, we can see the most viable routes that the GOP nominee will have in this election as well. With that in mind, ahead of the 2020 election, Sabato's Crystal Ball conducted an analysis using the 2016 election as a template, creating a unit of measurement called the cost of an electoral college vote, aka how many voters a candidate would have needed to net per electoral college votes to win a state. That cost is calculated by dividing a state's raw vote margin by its number of electoral votes, and therefore the cheapest electoral votes come from states that have tight margins and lots of electoral votes. Using this framework, we can explore the different paths that the 2024 GOP nominee could build on Trump's 2020 map to win the presidency. While these six routes that we will explore in this video are not the only ways that Republicans could win the election, they are the most viable according to the raw number of votes the GOP nominee would need to flip, as well as the average cost per electoral vote. Before we begin, because the GOP will likely come away with the presidency in the case of an electoral college tie, the magic number that the Republican nominee will need to hit in this video is 269, not the typical 270. The Constitution is pretty clear on how this process would play out. If there is no winner in the Electoral College, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 3 states that the decision goes to the House of Representatives, while the Senate picks the Vice President. 
However, the voting in the House is different from the Senate. In the vote for vice president, each senator has one vote. But in the House, each state has only one vote for president, regardless of its size, and a presidential candidate needs 26 states to win. As it stands right now, Republicans are in the majority, with control of 25 state delegations. Democrats control 23 state delegations, and two states, Minnesota and North Carolina, have tied delegations. Alrighty, let's start with the aforementioned example of Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin. Biden carried these states by 11,779 votes, 10,457 votes, and 20,682 votes, respectively, for a combined 42,918. With 37 electoral votes between the three of these states, the average cost per electoral vote is 1,160. This is probably the GOP nominee's easiest route to victory. It's the path with the smallest raw vote margin and the cheapest cost per electoral vote. That being said, one thing that may be a challenge for the GOP nominee is to find a message that could appeal to the distinct electorates of these three states, both regionally and demographically, these states are all quite different, and finding a message that can win over crucial voters in all of them may be a challenge. Wisconsin, for example, in the Rust Belt, ranks below the national average in proportion of college-educated voters and non-white residents, while Arizona and Georgia in the Sun Belt both rank in the top 10 most racially diverse states. Based on my own analysis that I conducted for my own proprietary 2024 presidential election forecast, which you can check out at electionpredictionsofficial.com, Wisconsin ranks as the 21st most favorable state for Republican candidates, demographically speaking, while Arizona ranks 27th and Georgia 38th. Meanwhile, while Wisconsin has trended 6.8 points more toward Republicans compared to the rest of the country since 2012, Arizona and Georgia have shifted 8.9 and 7.6 points towards the left. Now, the second pathway for Trump and Republicans is through Pennsylvania and Georgia. Biden carried these states by 80,555 votes and 11,779 votes, respectively, for a combined 92,334. As the two states' counts add up to 35 electoral votes between them, the average cost per electoral vote is 2,638. Out of all of the competitive states, Pennsylvania does come with the largest reward, 19 electoral votes. If the GOP nominee can flip the Keystone State, they will unlock a whole bunch of new and far easier routes to 269. This is the first of four options that include Pennsylvania we will explore. Now I understand that given that Pennsylvania and Wisconsin have voted for the same party in every election since 1988, and Pennsylvania has generally voted for Democrats by slightly higher margins than Wisconsin, it might seem like the GOP nominee carrying Pennsylvania would mean that by default, they will also carry Wisconsin. But that is not a foregone conclusion. They likely will vote similarly, but because of both are so competitive, they could break in different ways. As things stand right now, while Trump leads Biden by 2.2% in Pennsylvania, according to Race to the White House's polling average, he trails Biden by 1.1% in Wisconsin. Trump's largest polling advantage out of any of the key battlegrounds is in Georgia right now, where he's ahead of Biden by 5.8%. Narrow victories in these two states alone would launch Trump all the way up to 270 electoral votes exactly. It's the only combination of two battleground pickups, other than Pennsylvania and Michigan, with the latter being less favorable for the GOP, that would get Trump to the necessary number. The third path, though, that I could see the GOP going down substitutes Georgia with Pennsylvania, giving Trump and Republicans pickups in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. The third path that I could see the GOP going down substitutes Georgia in the first pathway with Pennsylvania, giving Trump and Republicans pickups in Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Wisconsin. These states' 2020 margins combine for a total of 111,694. 
but with 40 electoral votes between them, the cost per electoral vote comes out to 2,792, not that much higher than the previous option. The most important thing to note though here about this option is that it does show a realistic way to 269 that does not go through Georgia. That is important because Georgia has been on a steep slide towards Democrats in recent years, moving faster away from the GOP than most other battleground states. Another possibility here though is to replace Wisconsin with Nevada, which comes out to an electoral vote cost of 3,461. Now, while this may be a bit harder to imagine considering the cost of votes in Nevada, it was decided by 33,596 votes in 2020 and only has six electoral votes, but unlike Georgia and Arizona, it has been trending rightward relative to the nation in recent years. It's not too hard to imagine it flipping to the GOP, while other states that were closer in 2020 do not. Penultimately, it's also worth looking into options that don't include either Arizona or Georgia. As I hinted at earlier, they have had the fourth and sixth strongest pro-democratic shifts of any state over the last decade. This path would drop the Grand Canyon state in favor of Wisconsin, and result in an electoral vote cost of 3,852. Again, it may seem unlikely that Nevada will turn red while well, Georgia and Arizona stay blue, but that becomes easier to imagine if you look at the rightward course Nevada's been charting in recent years. Finally though, let's take a look at a bit more of a wildcard option that returns a very nice cost of investment in electoral votes at 2,225. Now one of the most concerning aspects for Republicans in 2024 is that if their nominee loses the three Rust Belt states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, they will almost have no realistic path to 269. This scenario, however, would give them a path to 269 votes by sweeping the Sunbelt states of Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, and then supplementing that with a victory in Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, which under 2024's congressional lines would have been decided by less than 20,000 votes in the 2020 election. Nebraska, along with Maine, are the only two states that allocate their electoral votes by congressional district, and while its second district has trended Democratic in recent years, it is represented by a Republican House member, showing that GOP victory here is not totally outlandish. And interestingly, other than the route of Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin, this is the cheapest way to victory for the GOP, both in terms of total votes it would need to flip and the cost per electoral vote. If this happened, the electoral vote would be tied at 269 to 269, a situation that would probably end with a Republican president. This is the only realistic way for Republicans to win the presidency without flipping any of the Rust Belt trio. There are, of course, other scenarios we did not cover. Say perhaps the GOP nominee manages to win back Michigan or New Hampshire. If that were to happen though, the Republican nominee would already very likely be well past 269 electoral votes. If on election night, Michigan or New Hampshire appear to be in play for Trump and Republicans, I'd say with near certainty that the Biden campaign, or the Democratic campaign, so to speak, would have already accepted their doomed fate. So instead of spending their campaign resources on states with a relatively strong degree of lean towards the other party, like Michigan and New Hampshire, the candidates will likely focus their attention on the pathways detailed above, and on winning the cheapest electoral votes. The nominees of both parties would of course still be smart to expand their strategy to as many states they think they do have a realistic path of winning, as it doesn't hurt to shore up your chances in as many battlegrounds as possible. But a smart campaign would identify one or two of these pathways and direct most of their resources in that direction. That will be all though for today's video though. Shout out to my channel members on screen here. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, go ahead and click that join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to my channel down below and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also be sure to check out electionpredictionsofficial.com for my 2024 presidential election forecast as well. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.